Well, so um, I was I was looking at this thing, a photograph, and it showed a an ice cream parlor. Oh, I think it's working now. I think it's working now. There you are. Now, now I think you're on there. Okay. So anyway, I was looking at this photograph of an ice cream parlor, and the the sign said ten thousand calorie ice cream. Like it was like they were bragging. This is get this ice cream, ten thousand calories. And so these two young girls, they were they were in good shape, and they were happy to get these. It was like you know from the forties, I guess. It was a very old photograph. Uh, well, I looked into this, and and apparently there were, there's two explanations there. First of all, what we call a calorie is actually ten thousand calories. Really? Or no, or one thousand calories, oh. or, or something. I've got the story That's later on. Oh, one thousand instead of a. Yeah, 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 uh-huh. yeah. But but still, we live by. It's kind of like Celsius and Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. As long as you're familiar with the numbers, then you know what they mean. Yeah. But anyway, so ten thousand probably meant one thousand calories, which is still a lot for an ice cream. Okay. Um, but back in those days, they didn't really have a perfect science for measuring calories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, they did it by burning things and, and measuring how hot the water got. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. So it wasn't exactly a science as it is today. So I have this whole thing. We have this, uh, and this is really not a, a commercial, but they, there's a new store opening up today. There was a big line, Robin told me, waiting morning, for the grand opening. O'clock. What's it called again? Earth, Earth Fair? Fair? Yep. Earth Fair. Fair yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got a list. This is part of what I want to talk to Galen about. 127 ingredients you'll never find in any food in Earth Fair. 127 things. Oh. Uh, and and part of the part of the whole message is that if you get a strawberry milkshake at like McDonald's, not to pick on one or over the other, but pretty much all of them, there's not one strawberry in any of them. Oh my! There's no ice cream in any of them. Oh <laughs> there's my. no ice cream. There's no <laughs> strawberry. Yeah. In a strawberry milkshake. So. Go figure. So that's the topic, kind of, with Galen this morning. Plus one of, plus one of the, uh, one of the, <laughs> was good. it a football player who killed himself this morning? I don't know. I haven't heard your news yet. Oh, it was it was just on the news. That's sad. I didn't hear it. Well, he was in jail. He was in. The, he's oh. been in the news lately. What is his name again? Uh, oh. Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez. Oh, okay. Former. Okay. Well, he was with the NFL, but he had been a Gator, right? You're right. So right. I wanted to ask Galen. And about he killed that. himself while he was in jail. This morning, yeah. Oh. Wherever he was locked well, up, I don't know. But he's in jail. We didn't need him. <laughs> <laughs> he's in jail. Robin is a cold, well, he did something cold bad, woman. So. Oh, yeah, no, she, he was a murderer. Yeah, yeah he yeah. murdered people. So, uh, News Bites at 835. That's when we don't offer opinions like that, Gene. Okay. <laughs> Angelique Feaster Evans is the founding artistic managing director of the Mahogany Ensemble Theater. Angelique is an artist, a creative educator, coming on to speak to us about the gospel musical from the Mahogany Ensemble Theater of Louisiana, which is, long story short, this is going to be at the Ocala Civic Theater. Yep. Are they coming into this? No, she's on the phone, and the musical is called Crowns. 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 It's a gospel musical. Uh, Starts uh, Thursday. So it'll be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Ocala Civic Theater. And when she's here, we'll have uh, two tickets to give away. All right. Dr. Vuisil T. Nicomo. Hope I'm saying that name right. You thought your name was hard. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Dr. Nicomo is a cardiologist and a researcher uh, interested in cardiovascular diseases. Um, Probably I would be a good person to study. After having just some, what, what did I have? Burger King. Oh yeah, we had um, <laughs> uh, sausage egg and cheese yeah. croissants. But there's they're real, really it's good. real sausage yeah, in there. Good. That's right. I love that. Yeah, they've got some calories. In <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. It's in me. <laughs> Laura Burns is coming in from Career Source at nine thirty-five. If you know somebody who needs a job, that might be yourself, or maybe you're looking for a better job, you're looking for a career. Laura represents, and Career Source represents. Um, uh, job employers, whatever, uh, whatever, in Citrus, Levy, and Marion County. So she'll be here to talk to us about those jobs. Donna Orange has a name that rhymes with nothing else. <laughs> That's what I hear. She's a psychoanalyst, probably why she got into that field. She's got a book called Climate Crisis, Psychoanalysis, and Radical Ethics. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'll be interesting. What do you think? Is that a mixture of politics and science? Is that what's going to happen Sounds today? Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the word psycho. <laughs> yeah. Kitty Ferguson is uh, one of the panelists on I've Got a Secret. No, no, that was Kitty, oh, Kitty Carlisle. Carlisle. You've got a secret. Yeah, Kitty that Carlisle. Was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, this is a consultant. There. Yes. The Universe in a Nutshell is a book by Stephen Hawking, and uh, he doesn't make radio appearances, so she's coming on in his behalf. Hmm. Isn't that cool? 
Yeah. That's right. And uh, she contributed to his book. She was asked to be a consultant by him. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, her, b- <laughs> her book is called Lost Science. Now, this yep. looks like something you would have in school, doesn't it? Yes. Doesn't it look like a science book? It does, but I mean, it's a school book. This is a science book. Uh, and then the voice of travel. This is where we uh, get to pretend we're going someplace with Anthony Jane. And uh, Jerry's Pawn and Gun, celebrating 50 years today. Oh, yes. Yep. 50 years for 50 Jerry's years Pawn for and Jerry's Gun. Jerry's Pawn and Gun. He's an icon in our community. <coughs> yeah. Same phone number for 50 years. How about that? There was a house fire in Dunellen, and the, oh. the people had ammunition, thinking of Jerry's. Cause oh, oh. A lot of people go to Jerry's. For, and they, the, the things were going off. The bullets were... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so the firefighters had to, you know, do whatever they do oh, to that. make sure nobody got hurt. Is everybody okay, though? I mean... Everybody's okay. The died. man, uh, 67-year-old man, he... Um, this was yesterday. He got out safely, so did his wife. Thank God. Uh, but he passed out on the lawn, and now he's in critical condition. We oh, don't, it does, oh, no. It doesn't say because of the fire, but probably the anxiety. Yeah. Maybe heart attack or something. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. speculating. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hope he's okay. Uh, so good morning, uh, Jean Hotelling and, and Jennifer Miller. Good morning. good morning to both of you. You are bright and early, Jennifer. Do you always get up early? Yeah, I'm a morning person. You're a morning person? <laughs> yeah. And you're an artist. You're going to be one of the artists at the... Uh, Yes, I am. <laughs> the art in the park? Yes. Mm-hmm. How hard is that to be down on your knees drawing on the ground? Um, well, actually, I'm going to be there as a volunteer, like painting people's faces or drawing caricatures of people. Oh, but, nice. So, yeah, I won't be drawing on the actual sidewalk, but I think my sister is going. She's going to be doing that. Oh, I have, really? I have done it before, though. So, it's it's a, I guess it can be hard, but mostly you're just caught up in drawing. I often think, Jean, about these paintings on the, with chalk. That you put so much work, they're so beautiful, and then the, the rain washes them away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole deal. Yeah. Uh, sort of transitory nature of, of artistic expression, I Temporary think. Temporary art. Yeah. I mean, typically we, f- we take art and preserve it, put it in a museum, and it lasts supposedly forever, but... Right. This art lasts, what, a weekend? Maybe. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, we've, we've had this event. This will be the seventh year I've done it, but I think it's the 14th year our, our high school has done it. And there have been years when... It's a washout. I mean, it's just raining when oh. you get up in the morning, and and it rains all day. Really? And so really? that's the end of a sidewalk chalk festival. That's the quickest, uh, quickest pulling the plug on the sidewalk chalk. Are, festival, are, are yeah. some of the concrete surfaces on the sidewalk more textured, I guess, than others? And and do the artists like pick their square based on that at all? They, they will this year. I think uh, one of the one of the things we kind of want to get out to the general public is this year it's a free event. In the past we've we've charged contestants to uh, draw on the sidewalk and we have assigned them a space in answer to your question. This year we're giving away the chalk. We're inviting people to really? come. Uh, wow. yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely free. It's just a, a community art event for lack of a better word wow, wow. And so when the people is it? are going to pick up their own they're going to pick their own spots and when is it what date it's, it's this saturday um the 22nd at tuscoilla park downtown okay and uh the city we do this in conjunction with the city's earth day and arbor day uh celebration and they have um it's not steam cleaned pressure washed mm-hmm. pressure washed the sidewalks oh, okay so okay. they are okay. textured i think the answer to your question is yes there's okay. some surfaces that are more textured than others and at what time clean. should they be there um, we're starting at about 10 o'clock in the morning, I believe, is the beginning of the event. We're going to be there at 8 and, you know, handing out chalk before that. So uh, let's say 9 o'clock would be a good time to, to to start and come down. You're staying with us to do the show till 8, right? You're you yes. going to be here for a while? Okay, oh, good. I think so, Good, yes. good, good. good. Mm-hmm. We have to take a break right okay. now. Okay, Jennifer, do you know the, uh, the Earth Day song? Are you familiar with it? No. <laughs> Let me teach it to you. Ready? <laughs> Happy Earth Day to you. <laughs> That's a nice song, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, let, let's take a little break. We will be right back. Gene Hotelling and Jennifer Miller is here. I think Arthur Thornton is on his way. I hope so. Uh, he's an 11th grade student. Jennifer, by the way, 12th grade student, right? Yeah. Wow, good for you. All right, we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. News Radio, I'm Rich Dennison. Republican Karen Handel and Democrat John Ossoff will meet in a June runoff for a Georgia congressional seat vacated by Tom Price, who became President Trump's Health and Human Services Secretary. Ossoff coming out on top of an 18 candidate ballot yesterday in the typically conservative district. Y'all ready to flip the sixth? He fell just short of the majority vote needed for an outright win. Corey Ali Mohammed jailed in Fresno, California, facing four counts of murder. Police believe Mohammed, a black man, killed a motel guard last week and three people yesterday because they were white. This is solely based 
on race. Fresno Police Chief Jerry Dyer. North Korea again put on notice. Vice President Mike Pence in Japan today saying the U.S. would bring an overwhelming and effective response to any use of nuclear or conventional weapons by North Korea. Fox News. We report. You decide. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. When I grow up, I want to be a glass countertop in a new home. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's best birthday present. When I grow up, I want to be a football stadium. When I grow up, I want to be a warm place on a cold day. When I grow up, I want to be a fancy when backsplash. I, grow up, I want to be a bike that races around the when country. When I grow up, I want to be a bench on a forest when I trail. Grow up, I want to be a rocking chair on when a sunny up, porch. I want to be a skyscraper. I want to be a... 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 When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. A public service advertisement brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. On this episode of What Not To Do, brought to you by Mike Scott Plumbing. If water runs through it, we do it. Holy what have you done in my kitchen? Oh, honey, how is it? I never know when she's coming home. What are all these pipes laying around? Why is my dishwasher in the living room, and why is the carpet all wet? Well, remember that fancy new kitchen remodel you've always wanted? Oh, I do, and this is not it. But I thought I might save some money by doing it myself. You thought wrong. I promise this is going to cost you way more. You should have called in the professionals at Mike Scott Plumbing because I'm pretty sure when I flush the toilet, water is not supposed to come out of the sink. Notice that, did you? The next thing I'm going to notice is you calling Mike Scott Plumbing like you should have done in the first place. Yes, dear. 866-314-4443. Yes. 866-314-4443. That played out so differently in my head. On next week's episode of What Not To Do. No, not monkeys. Since 1916, a lot of independent agents have recommended auto owners insurance. And a lot of parents have taken that recommendation to heart. So have a lot of their children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. As we celebrate our first 100 years, Auto Owners Insurance thanks all those who have put their trust in us. And all the generations who will. Call George Mankin Insurance in Ocala today, 352-732-3191. Sunrise Automotive, this is Matt. Hey, Matt, it's Dan. Hey, Dan. Listen, we're going to be doing some traveling, and I need to make sure the car is in good shape. Why don't you just bring it on by? Let us check it out. We can check all your belts, your hoses, your tires, all your fluids. In out of town, is that up north? In the cold? Yep. Okay. Let's check your antifreeze. Also, let's make sure your washer fluid has got alcohol in it so it doesn't freeze up north, because that, that makes for a rotten day. And let's check your air pressure in your tires. Let's look at your brakes. Make sure everything is safe and secure there. Let's go through it and just make sure everything is ready to go on the road. You do for an oil change? Yep. Whenever you come in to get your oil change, we always check your belts, your hoses, all your lights. We go through and make sure that everything is working properly. We check all your fluid levels. We do that every time you come in to Sunrise Automotive. So just call you back at this number? Yeah, just give me a call back at 690-1993 whenever you're ready to come in. And you can drop it off, leave it with us, whatever is most convenient for you. Look forward to seeing you at Sunrise Automotive. Mr. Webster defines a caterer as someone who provides food and refreshment. Whether you are looking to provide an excellent meal and a refreshment for a small group, party, business meeting, or a large get-together, Honey Baked Ham, 2709 Southwest 27th Avenue in Ocala, will provide the delicious breakfast, lunch, or dinner items of your choice. No need for you to fret over the details. Let Honey Baked Ham handle it all. Call Honey Baked Ham today at 352-861-0011. That's 861-0011. All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. I mean, do a quick uh, weatherman thing here. I'm the amateur weatherman, you know. 64 degrees, uh, to- uh, high temperatures today reaching 87, and tonight's low is around 60. So copy and paste that and put it into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's the forecast all the way through the weekend. It doesn't change at all till Monday f- is the first day where we see rain mentioned in the forecast. Yesterday there were some more clouds, and disappointedly so, right, because we had a rocket ship that went up. I don't know. You know what I was told, Gene? I was told that our generation 
is more excited about rockets that go up than the like, Jennifer's generation. Like it's like a bus for them. Hmm. Like it's so commonplace. Yeah, they're they're used to it. But for us, it was like a big deal to see, and still is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so. I, we were excited about it yesterday because we can't undo our age. Yeah. No, no that's, that's pretty thing. It's, a one way, uh, it's a one-way wheel. Uh, so let's talk about the art a little bit. Um, you are, uh, an, uh, are you going to be an artist as by profession, uh, Jennifer? Well, I'm double majoring in political science and studio art, so it really depends on my experience in internships with which one I like better. So Political science. It's still, it's still up in the air. So where, where might that take you, the political um, science? I'm interested in government work as well, so yeah. Oh, working in the government? Yes. As a legislator? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Gen Jennifer is the president of our art club, mm -hmm. and... Um, and something and other things. I, she's involved in so many things. I don't even know. So somebody, with, somebody who's leader. making our laws, who also has an artistic viewpoint of life, might Hallelujah. be a good thing for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah we might might be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and Jean, you've been teaching how long? This is my twenty third year uh, wow. in public school, and then I taught several years up at the University of Florida, which I guess is a public school too. But at the college level, I I taught about three or four years there, and uh, so this is twenty third year in Marion County, which is it's a, a it's fun. an amazing thing you do. I don't I don't know how you do what you do. I uh, my my niece I, I play guitar. My niece asked me to teach her guitar, so every Saturday she was coming in here. And for a half hour, I was teaching guitar. Right. And I was thinking, and she's a pretty good student. Right. But still, it was not easy. And I was thinking, yes. oh, my gosh, how do you do it when you have uh, hundreds of kids? Yeah. And they're not all easy. That's, it's just an amazing thing that you do that over, I, every day. I don't know that I can answer your question. But, but most people have that same experience you had when, they, when they're trying to teach their kids to drive. So I always use that <laughs> right, as a reference. Right. It's like, what is that experience like? You yeah. Know, you're yeah. in the front seat and you're, uh, you know. There's some of that that goes on. Um, it's a lot of fun, though. There's a, a tremendous reward. And um, after 23 years, I have people now in their 30s and 40s, you know, that have uh, been my students. And then they're coming back with their families. Their kids are going into school. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah. It's a great way to make a living. And uh, Jennifer, you're pretty amazing because you're going to be a, a mentor, even though you don't really realize it. Because when the, the uh, younger children come today and they see what's going on with the other artists and they see you face painting and doing uh, uh, caricatures, you're going to inspire them to go on an artistic path. And that's an awesome responsibility you have. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool. I, I, I agree. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> So what, what got you started in art? Were you just always interested in drawing pictures when you were a kid? Um, yeah, I think I was. Like, I, I can't really describe it just always being drawing, but I, I assume that everyone's like that. Every, like Pablo Picasso is the one that said that everyone is born an artist. The problem arises whenever you start to grow up. It's keeping hold of what it is to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And so I think everyone draws when they're growing up. It's just certain people that really love it and they keep doing it. Isn't it interesting how you can recognize somebody's art it's almost like recognizing somebody's face or yes. or somebody's music in some cases. Mm -hmm. yep. you know, some really people cool. are, um, I don't want to say copycats, but some people emulate other people. So, you you know, you can hear a resemblance in music and see a resemblance in art. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But yes, there's something to that. Yeah, but it's, it, it is interesting how how you how do you do that as a teacher? How do you persuade somebody to to develop their own style? Well. Um, it takes time and practice. I mean, I think the first step is is learning the basics. It's one of those you've got to know the rules to break them type of thing. Okay. Right, but then, right. as you recognize something unique, you try to push them in that direction, and certainly complement that work and and try to uh, try to nurture it, just like your little uh, apple seed over there. You know, yes. step by step. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's in a paper towel now with water. I assume you're being careful to give it water regularly, uh -huh. and uh, soon you're going to move. That's it the into teacher a in him. Coming out, Robert. Exactly. That was the teacher <laughs> reminding me subtly <laughs> to water my paper towel. Right, right. right. But the, you know, the next step is putting it in some soil, and and, and actually, <laughs> there you uh, go. The, the metaphor there is that's really what teaching is all about. I mean, you're going to do it when you're done. It's going to be your little tree, and you're going to be the <laughs> you're one a good who, teacher. Who, who you. grew it. But yeah, 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 you know, yeah. you got some advice from some some gardeners. It sounded like so. You know, that's the way it well, works. Well, that's the advantage of having a radio show. There's, there's experts all around me. Right. <laughs> 
sure. <laughs> no I, matter what. I'm not an expert in anything. It <laughs> looks like I am because it looks like I'm, I'm piloting an airplane here. <laughs> but there's a button. That's it. I push a button. We're on the air. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's all I need. Well, Gene, something amazing about you is that you yourself are an artist, a professional artist. You have your own style. But yet when you're teaching your students, you're encouraging them to have their own style and not do your particular style. Yes, it it's That's true. Hard. It, it's difficult. You have to do demonstrations. But I, I will tell you, I consciously avoid showing the students my work, at least not in the early classes, because mm -hmm. uh, they are imitative and they want to they wanna please me. So the natural thought is, well, I'll make something like that because... That's what he makes, and he's going to like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm careful of that. It's it's actually kind of treacherous because uh, you see the work that you like, and you want to copy it, you know, as he said. So, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Yeah. But one advantage I have is that my own creative expression is in ceramics and 3D, and I'm teaching drawing and painting. So there's... There's an overlap, but in general. What is the difference, and I hope this doesn't sound like a real kindergarten question, but what is the difference between ceramics and China? The, I'm asking for a reason. The there, there is no difference. China, oh, is, no it, China is a particular type of clay. It's a white clay, usually porcelain. Oh, okay. It fires at a little higher temperature. It's denser. Okay. But um, regular pottery... Uh, it's the same. It's the same process. Oh. It's just different let, clay. Let me, let me tell you why I'm asking. The other was it this past weekend we went to Cedar Key. Yes. We went this. We, well, we went to this. Th there was a fundraiser for uh, Special Olympic, well, special needs children, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a clay shoot over in Inglis, and mm. we were we were videotaping people with shotguns shooting clay out of the sky. Yeah, <laughs> like. Uh, right. So we're in English. I said, hey, well, now let's go someplace fun. So we went to Cedar Key. We did not know there was an art show going on at that time. One of the artists was a ceramics artist, nice. and, and she made, um, what do you call, wind chimes. Right. And she was showing how the ceramic had a different ting yeah. when they, than the other ones did. The, so I yeah. didn't, I was like, wow, I never knew there was a difference. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the density, the higher... The higher the fire, uh, the higher the temperature that they fire the ceramics to, the clay molecules get closer together, and then they have a more a different bell-like huh? tone, yeah, yeah. Well, as opposed to say terracotta, like pottery that you would put oh. plants in, is a dull. That probably makes no sound at no, all. No, it has right? kind of a thunky sound yeah. when you ping it. But the china, the higher fire, it's going to have a tone, you know, a, a ring. Oh. And uh, uh, Jennifer, you, what type of mediums do you like to work in? Um, I really enjoy painting and digital work as well, like acrylic paint is one of my favorite types of paint to do. I don't have much experience with oil, but I'm starting to get into that too because it's very fun. I also like marker works, drawing, I really like line, so I like um, pencil work as well. Mm -hmm. You could say mixed media. Yeah. Oh. Mixed media. <laughs> mixed media. <laughs> mixed media. And, during the, and during the break, we were, we were talking about the computerized art that mm -hmm. is probably part of our lives without us even knowing about it. Oh, yes. And how that's that's... Two, two things happen that's similar to music. Uh, in art, a lot of people think it's a computer, therefore the computer did it. Music, the same way. Mm -hmm. we, Robert and I will work on music for five days, right. <laughs> and when you have a three-minute a three minute song at the end of it, somebody will say, oh, wow, you used a computer. Well, yes! Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. to, to add to Jennifer's credits, she is also a cellist and, a, and a playing and learning to play the violin. Oh, my gosh. Plays in the, uh, sim the Ocala Symphony. For, really? For several years. Uh, I played in um, the Ocala Youth Symphony, Youth Symphony for uh, since I was nine, I believe. But I stopped about two years ago to focus more on art and everything in school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so nice. She's just amazing. Nice. And if I can give her another plug, First Friday Art Walk, Jennifer has a booth there if you guys want to see her work. Nice. Yeah, she's there every first Friday of every Good month. Good for you. Good where for at? You. What, what location are you? Uh, that I don't uh, know. It's right by a marketplace on Broadway. It's where I think Coyote, the, that place used to be but it since closed but i'm still under where it used to oh, be okay so the last one i believe is in may so may 5th is the last time the art walk oh, will be there so i'll be there nice <laughs> we're up against the break so let's okay. take the break and uh, when we come back we, i do want to squeeze in some news i'd love to hear your commentary on some of these stories but we will before we're done with this uh, that segment we'll also come back to the uh, art in the, the park, park yeah, event we'll chat that up a bit. okay so we'll take a little break and we'll be right back gene hoteling and jennifer miller are joining us and we'll be right back the weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Wednesday, a mix of clouds and sunshine and warm with a high of 81 on the coast, 86 inland. Partly cloudy skies Wednesday night, lows in the upper 50s and low 60s in the coolest inland spot to about 70 along the coast. 
Thursday and Friday, more sun than clouds and warm with a high on Thursday, 81 at the coast, 86 inland. Friday's high, 82 in the coast, approaching 90 well inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you in need of custom screen printing, embroidery, or promotional items? Then look no further and come visit the brand new Legacy Team Sales. LTS is conveniently located off 17th Street next to Armstrong Homes in beautiful Ocala. We offer the best prices and highest quality products for your company, team, school, or nonprofit. Whether looking for screen printed shirts, embroidered polos, or travel team uniforms, you'll be sure to find it at Legacy Team Sales. Come visit our new 27,000 square foot facility. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff will assist you in every part of your custom purchase. LTS carries the hottest brands in the industry like Under Armour, Russell, Mizuno, Asics, Badger Sports, Gildan, Pacific, Ogeo, and many more. At LTS, screen printing embroidery is done in-house and we guarantee customer satisfaction. Stop by, give us a call, or check us out on the web at shoplts.com. Remember the name, LTS. There are only a few things in life that you can be certain will always be around. Death, taxes, the pursuit of happiness, and computers. As they continue to advance at an epic pace, the one absolute certainty about them is that they'll break. It's not an if, it's a when. And when it happens, bring it to the only company in Ocala that's certified in Apple and Microsoft. Ocala Mac and PC Repair. They even offer on-site computer repair service, so they come to you. And if you do drop it off, you can check your repair status online. Ocala Mac and PC Repair is a family-owned and operated company that can do everything from mobile repair to wireless networks, fixing viruses, data recovery, even building and installing new systems. Visit online at OcalaMacPC.com. In person, 1713 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Or give them a call, 352-566-8324. That's 352-566-8324. Ocala Mac and PC Repair. You're going to love your new windows and the immediate energy savings when you work with Renewal by Anderson. You'll experience legendary quality installation. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com for a free in-home consultation with the pros. Right now, save 20% on every window and door, plus 20% off installation. No money down, 0% interest, and zero payments for 12 months with approved credit. Visit RenewalByAnderson.com. RenewalByAnderson.com. Offer ends April 30th. License CGC 1524135. All right, 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. It's another beautiful day in Ocala. You made it to the middle of the week. Holy cow. And I forgot to put my garbage out, Robin. Today's garbage day in my oh, neighborhood. Yes, it is. I, it's yeah, yeah. Day. I, I'm horrible with this. <laughs> I'm horrible with putting the garbage on. All right, here we go. We got some news. Uh, uh, Jean and Jennifer, uh, you are please welcome to uh, comment on any of these stories. The first one is um, there is a an asteroid that will be coming close to Earth today. Um, here's what they mean by close. 1.1 million miles. That's okay. <laughs> five times farther away from the Earth than the moon is. But by astron- astronomical standards, that's pretty close. Um, so there you go. An asteroid. That's pretty cool. Doesn't say what time. That it's it's really a 2,000 foot wide rock. Wow. Isn't it amazing how they know these things? Yeah. It's just amazing. I no. was afraid they're going to hit the space station. Yeah, I'm afraid that anything they might hit, but I guess a million miles away. Will yeah, be that's, all right. that's, I yeah. think we've got a true. little margin of error there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Walmart is debuting an online ordering um, thing today. Did you know this? No. Fighting back against Amazon. Uh, Walmart today will begin offering discounts on thousands of items ordered online if you pick them up at the, your nearest store. So rather than uh, having UPS deliver your Amazon package, you call, you go online, go to buy stuff at Walmart. I guess you pay for it. You can go pick it up. Amazing. I was in Walmart yesterday, and I said to Robin, <laughs> I, we have five, three items, mm-hmm. and I'm in a line that's taking a half hour. Right. It's yeah. always the case. Yes. Yep, right here on Easy Street, they have all these you know, uh, cashier places, but they don't have hardly any cashiers, and, and the self-service is all backed up, too. It's, it's so right. disgusting. So yeah. frustrating. frustrating when you're in a hurry. I say, yeah. if I'm going to Disney World... And I don't want to stand in an hour line for the Space Mountain ride. 
Why would I stand a half hour for a jar of deodorant? Or why? <laughs> right, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so the Walmart is like training ground for for standing in lines at Disney. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> go there. <laughs> I'm ready to go to Disney. Uh, the, the New England Patriots are scheduled to visit the White House today to celebrate their Super Bowl 51 victory with President Trump. But there may, may be more focus on the Patriots if they don't show up. More now, focus why would on which or on which one of them don't show up. Shortly, oh, is it, I see. Wasn't this guy who killed himself, wasn't he with the Patriots? Really? I don't remember. Let's see. Aaron Hernandez. Oh, yeah. New England Patriots star. Wow. Mm-hmm. Aaron Hernandez, the former New England Patriots star who was convicted of murder in 2015, killed himself in his prison cell this morning. Hmm. He was 27 years old, and I'm pretty sure I heard uh, that he had been a Florida Gator football player. Hmm. Yeah, he just couldn't live with himself after doing something that horrendous. Uh, so anyway, they're going to be at the uh, White House today. Good, I'm glad. The um, Prime British Prime Minister Theresa May will ask Parliament today for an early general election. June 8th, as the country starts its path toward exiting the European Union. Are you keep you have an opinion on the Brexit thing? Any opinions on this? All, all, all I know is I have some friend, some British friends who are very much opposed to, opposed to Brexit. To it. Yeah, they, they thought it was a bad idea. They were stunned that it passed. They felt like some of the politicians manipulated the information and the situation. Oh, really? But oh. that's from people who live there. It's about a 50-50, wasn't it? Like it was just split right down the yeah, middle, really, yeah. and they barely barely passed it. So <clears throat> remains to be seen, you know, what what the consequences are for Britain and the Union. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, if I was to compare it to Texas seceding from the United States, yes. we, we'd all be opposed to it, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whether, if I, even if I live in Te- well, Florida, let's say, wanted to secede, I'd be opposed to it. Right. So I don't know if it's the same thing or not. The interesting thing about that, in my opinion, was that it really fermented over the um, the immigration issue yeah. and and uh, refugees from Syria. Right, right. And, and Britain basically said, you know, you, we're not going to let the European tell us how many people we have to accept and mm-hmm. what we have to do. You know, that ended up, I think, fueling a lot of the public yeah, opinion. Yeah, was, exactly. Yeah. Um, here's a science story that might have some political elements to it. Scientists say a melting glacier has caused a river in the Yukon Territory to change direction. Wow. wow. <laughs> they say the change is likely to be permanent. Melting of the uh, Kaskawalsh Gate Glacier in northern Canada has caused it to retreat a mile, redirecting the waters last spring and causing the Slims River to dry up and start draining into a different river than it had before. Hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I guess the political p- part is that global warming is a political issue. Yes. People argue it all the time. Oh, you're going to love this one. You know that, <laughs> you know the, 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 the leader of North Korea? Yes. yes. Do you know his hairdo? Yes. yes. Do you like that hairdo? Yeah. I, it's the exact least, opposite of yours. At least he has hair, yes. It's the exact yeah. opposite. <laughs> yeah. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un says no other man in North Korea can have that haircut. Oh, no. You're joking. <laughs> He used to be the other way around. Everybody had to have his haircut. Not anymore. And now oh, nobody yeah. has to have his haircut. They're okay. around in the hair business right now. They, they have they have distributed guides, illustrated guides. They had to have an artist to do these, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long would it take you to draw just his like from his ears up? Could that would take no time at all, right? Yeah. Minutes. It depends on how detailed, like. Yeah. It's a Muppet. Isn't that basically a Muppet <laughs> hairdo? Uh, Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer you know, works it's pretty it's quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say a half hour. She By the way, coloring your hair in North Korea is also forbidden. So if you got gray hair, you live with gray hair. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Uh, I bet they do it anyway, though. President, uh, former <laughs> President George H.W. Bush is in the hospital in Houston. Oh. Got pneumonia. Mm-mm. Uh, the, U- the USS Carl Vinson aircraft carrier is still several thousand miles south of North Korea, despite reports last week that it claimed it was heading to the volatile region. The Stars and Stripes newspaper reported that the Carl Vinson strike group was actually making its way toward Australia. The news reported it was heading toward North Korea. I don't know. If somebody <laughs> got that wrong. Uh... 
Facebook wants you to sit in your bedroom wearing a headset and take a virtual vacation with faraway friends and family. Oh, that's How nice. about that? The promise of augmented reality was a big focus of Facebook's annual conference yesterday. CEO Mark Zuckerberg kicked off the uh, event uh, with other tech guys talking about augmented reality tools that he envisions. One day you'll be able to sit in your chair, put on your your helmet, your friend across the world will put on his helmet, and the two of you can take a walk through Paris. Wow. I don't want to do that. Wow. That's an amazing thing. I'd rather thing, be real. Though. Yeah, well, I'd rather be real, too, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> Paris is, what, six $700 plane ticket. Yeah. This thing is probably... I wonder if it's real time, though. I mean... Are you seeing what's happening in Paris at that time? Yeah, I don't that'd know. be a really cool concept. Yes. Really neat. Yeah. Would you uh, like that, Jennifer? Would you like to do that? I does, think it sounds very, very interesting. Like, But like Mr. Taylor said, like, of course, being real is the better alternative. But just the concept that it exists and that someone thought to create it, that they succeeded in creating it, I think that's such a cool thing to happen. Yep. <laughs> and if it is real time... What about other things they could show you? You know, yeah. like fundraising for starving kids in Africa, where you yeah, that, actually walking that's through a village. That's of kids an amazing are, thought. You know, yeah, um, or any other thing. The yeah. climate, the climate issues. You know, actually visit that river and see that it's dried up. And that's fantastic. You know, <laughs> that is kind of cool, touch yeah. people a little closer. It would also be cool to, like. If you're deciding where you want to go, you yeah. know, see what Paris is like, see what Madrid is like, you know. But you can't smell it. You can't then. feel the air coming up out of the vent. No, uh, no, that's <laughs> true. No. Have you tried the 3D yes, glasses? My, yes. My, okay, my son has one, okay? Yeah. It's the only time I've ever done this. He put it on my head, and I was in this big white room, big, gigantic white room, and all of a sudden, all the... All the furniture in the room like collapsed, and it, oh. and it became a bigger white room. And then this robot flew in front of me, and it was the only thing in color. Everything else was in white or shades of white. And it and then it told me to grab these guns, and I grabbed these guns. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you pull the trigger, and balloons come out of the guns. And then they, and then my son says, "Hit the balloons, like with my real hand." So I, I'm hitting them, and they're moving. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. It's unbelievable. And then yeah. and then he put the head thing on Robin. And he put a different program in there, and hers was Star Wars. Star Wars. I was Wonderful. right there on Alderaan. And How about the, that? D2 walking around me and stuff. <laughs> now, that was cool. And, and the, the, what's it called? The Millennium Malcolm? What's yeah. it called? <laughs> the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Yeah, that you thing. pretty good. It flew over her head. It wow. Did under the duck. <laughs> and, the, and the dust was coming up from the... From the wow. Yeah, from that the was cool. It's amazing. And I could see on a flat screen what she was seeing, but of course in her world it was Hello. more real. It yes, was actually yes. happening. 60 degree. Amazing. All right, we want to uh, take these last two minutes and talk about the event you are here to promote. It is called Art in the Park. It is, it is this Saturday, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. From 9 to 3. And we just go to Tuscola Park, and you said it's free this year. It's free. We're giving away the chalk. We're encouraging people to come out and uh, draw. Jennifer is going to be doing characters. we got face painting and and uh, henna tattoos going on. The kids are doing that. We're giving away water. Anybody oh, is thirsty, free, free water. So uh, we're hoping for a big turnout. I've contacted all the art teachers in, in the county, and, mm -hmm. and they're encouraging their kids to come. It's held in conjunction with this Earth Day, Arbor Day thing, and there's just stuff for the whole family to do. Nice, they're giving nice, away nice. trees. They're doing a rappelling thing on a big oak tree that's there. And really? Yeah. Oh, it's it's really a lot of rappelling down an oak tree. Yeah, it's kind of a it's strange, but yes, nice. <laughs> for lack of a better way to describe it. That yeah. is cool. Should I try that, Robin? You think I'll break yeah. the tree? No, you no, won't. You I'll break, break the tree. tree. You think I'll break the tree. You'll have fun. How hard is it to do that 3D chalk thing? Did I ask you this once before? You know that they always see these pictures online about... It's increasingly difficult. I, I've tried to do it before. I didn't succeed. But it's like, um, it's all about perspective. Like, where you stand makes a great deal of mattering to how the drawing looks. Like, if you're standing to the right of the drawing, you're going to have to draw in perspective that way so that it's um, it's all about shading, perspective, stuff like oh, that. It's wow. really difficult. <laughs> and it looks better on a ca in a camera than yeah, in I your, with your eyes, Yeah, I think they set right? those photos up. Jean, Jean Hotelling and Jennifer Miller, thank you for what you do and for coming in to share it with us today and having fun with us. We, I tried to keep the stories light today. Uh, thank you both, and, and we'll see you on Saturday. Yeah, I hope so. Come out and visit us. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
This is a Fox News alert. I'm Lillian Wu. Former NFL star Aaron Hernandez found dead in his prison cell. The Department of Corrections says Hernandez hanged himself with a bed sheet in his cell and was found about 3 o'clock this morning. A statement says the former New England Patriot had also attempted to block his door from the inside by jamming it with various items. Fox Radio's Tiny J. Powers, this coming just days after he was acquitted of double murder. However, he was already serving a life without parole sentence for murdering Odin Lloyd in 2015. State police are investigating his death and his family has been notified. In a closely watched vote in Georgia's 6th Congressional District, Democrat John Ossoff narrowly missing an outright win in the Georgia state race. And we're learning more about how Facebook killing suspect Steve Stevens was caught, apparently a drive-through attendant at a McDonald's.